Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. I'm going to show you how to record and master audio on your iPhone. We're going to be using GarageBand, which is a music and audio production tool that you get for free with your iPhone. If you don't already have it installed, just head over to the App Store to download it. And as I mentioned, it's absolutely free. Now you can use this technique for any type of audio recording, whether it be a podcast, a narration to accompany your video footage, or even if you have the talent and you can sing, you could use this to accompany any type of music track. Now I don't have that type of talent, so the sample audio that I'm gonna use is a simple narration and it will be recorded with my Moving Mic Lav microphone, which plugs directly into the lightning port of the iPhone and delivers superior audio to the internal microphone of the iPhone. If you want to learn more about this microphone, I'll leave a link to my video review in the description box below. Now, I do tend to use external microphones for all of my recordings, even though the internal microphone of the iPhone is relatively good. It's just not as effective as using an external mic, especially given the fact that I often record in an environment that is quite open and not soundproof. So if I just use the internal mic, unless I get up really close, it tends to have too much room noise and echo. But if you don't have an external mic or the iPhone headset handy for your recording, go ahead and just speak into the base of the iPhone where the microphone is situated. And once we master the audio, it's gonna sound just great. So let's get started with our recording in GarageBand. And then once complete, we'll go over some of the audio filters available to master our audio track. Let's begin by creating a new project. To do that, tap on the plus button icon on the top right hand corner of the screen. You should automatically see the audio recorder screen. If you can't, simply swipe along left or right until you get to the audio recorder screen option. You can just tap on the voice icon on the left hand side, or if you wanna be more specific and record in a particular style, tap on the more sounds icon to the right hand side and you can record your vocals in with a predetermined set of effects for different types of audio ranging from lead vocals to radio to chorus pop overdrive distortion extreme stereo extra singer if you have more than one singer and narrator which is the one i'm going to use today so when you've selected the correct preset tap on it and you'll be taken to the recording screen. On the left hand side is the input option which allows you to change the parameters of the input. If you're using an external microphone as I am, you'll have some extra options here which allows you to change the input level or to go from automatic to manual input levels. And if you have headphones plugged in, as part of that audio device, you'll be able to monitor your audio. So tap on the monitor option to do that. And you can also turn on a noise gate to filter out any unwanted noise in the audio. And you can also use the slider on the right hand side to change the level of the monitor and even turn it off. You can adjust the tone, the presence, the amount of compression on the voice, and the resonance in order to suit your particular taste. If you chose one of those presets, it would have automatically brought in with it the appropriate settings for each one of those parameters. So perhaps it's best just to leave those as is for now, as you can always go in and adjust these after the fact, which I'll show you in the next step. Before we start the recording, there is one final setting we need to change. And in order to get there, tap on the plus icon on the right hand corner of the screen. And here we need to change the length of the project, which is currently restricted to eight bars to automatic, which means that it will continue to record uninterrupted no matter how long the recording is. Tap on automatic and then tap anywhere else on the screen to exit. And now we're ready to start recording. In order to do that, tap on the red record button in the top menu and you'll notice that a metronome appears. If you can still hear the metronome as you're recording, make sure you turn it off so that it doesn't bother you during your recording. Unless of course you are singing and you want the accompaniment of a metronome to help you with your timing, usually for a narration or any other type of audio, I would most certainly turn the metronome off. So now you can continue to record as long as you like. And then once you've completed your recording, you can press the stop button. Now, if you happen to make a mistake, 
you can just keep recording as you can go back and edit out those errors in the next step I'm about to show you. So tap on the arrangement view icon on the left hand side and now you'll see the audio track waveform appear on the timeline. So as I mentioned earlier, if you need to go in and make any edits to that audio, we can go in and cut sections of that track out. So in order to do that, simply drag the timeline marker along the timeline until you get to the in point where you would like to start your cut, release it, tap anywhere on the audio waveform, tap on split, and then you'll see the scissors icon appear, tap on it and slide it down in order to create that cut. Now go ahead and move the timeline marker to the out point of the cut, tap on the audio waveform again, tap on split, once again, tap on the scissors icon and slide it down. And now if we tap on that section, you'll see that we are able to select it independently of the rest of the audio. And if we want to completely delete it, we can tap on it. And in the sub menu that appears, tap on delete. And in order to close the gap, simply tap on the audio waveform to the right hand side of the gap and then slide it along to the left. And we have now cut out that section of audio that we no longer require in our recording. You can go ahead and repeat that process throughout the whole timeline until you're happy with your recording. There are other tools available in this edit mode, which I won't go into detail in this tutorial, including the ability to copy and paste clips and loop the audio for more advanced effects. If you need to add more audio to your recording, simply place the timeline marker at the end of the last recording and then press on record and you can record additional audio into the same track. So the next thing I wanna show you is how to actually master that audio recording. As you saw earlier, by going into one of those pre-configured presets, the audio should sound pretty good as it is. But if you wanna have more control over the sound of the audio, we can go in and manually adjust each one of those parameters. So in order to do that, we're going to tap on the track settings icon and you'll see a control panel slides in on the left hand side. And here we can adjust our track volume, our track pan, which adjusts our left and right speaker. Usually you wanna leave that in the middle. The volume you can adjust until you get it to sound just right. And as we scroll down, we get access to the compressor which is an effect that gives more of a presence to the vocal. And we can also adjust the treble and bass of the recording until we get the sound that best suits our particular vocal characteristics. And next are the master effects where you can select from echo and reverb. This would be more suited to singing. So there's no need to change those in this particular example. Now let's take a look at the plugins and EQ setting. This is a gray bar that sits just above the compressor. Tap on that, and then we'll see all of the effects that have come in with that preset that we chose. For this section, I'm going to switch over to my test audio track that I recorded using the Moving Mic Pro Lav microphone plugged into the lightning port of the iPhone. And that's what you're listening to right now. So if we tap on the plugins and EQ option, you can see we can go in and select each one of the effects on and off. And as you can hear, it was set too high. So the vocal is cutting out. So I'm going to go in and make an adjustment and reduce the threshold. And now that just reduces some of the low level line noise, but has no impact on the vocal itself. So that's fine. Now we can tap on and off the effect EQ. We can also turn off the compressor. So now you can hear the recording without a compressor. I'll turn it back on. And also we can go and make changes by using all of the settings, including the threshold, the ratio, the attack, and even the gain to give more emphasis to the vocal so that it really stands out in the mix. So that sounds really good to me now. I'll probably leave it at that level. And the final setting is the visual EQ, which gives us a graphic equalizer that we can adjust the bass, mid range and treble of our audio recording by simply tapping on the circular icons 
that represent each one of those audio ranges. The orange is the bass range. As you can see, we can go down in bass to cut off some of the bass, and we can go up higher if you want to increase the bass. The midsection sometimes sounds a little bit muddy, so we can lift that up higher so the vocal punches out in the mix a little bit further and with the treble you can either take it up higher or reduce it depending on your preference and what suits your particular vocal characteristics the most so i'd have to say i'm pretty happy with these minor adjustments and i'll probably leave it there so after having done all that we now have a mastered audio track once you've completed your edit, tap on the arrow on the top left hand corner of the screen. Go back to the My Songs section. Your project will be saved into the GarageBand library. Tap and hold on that project. A drop down menu appears, allowing you to rename your track. Once you've named your project, tap and hold the project icon again. Tap on the share icon that appears at the bottom of the sub menu. And now you can select to share it as a song, a ringtone, or a project. So if you're looking to save this out as an audio file that can be used in other projects, use the song option. If you're wanting to create a ringtone for your iPhone, you'd tap on ringtone. Or if you want to save it out as a project that you can send to another device that has GarageBand, tap on the project option. But for this example, I'm going to use the song option so that it will export out an audio file. And as you can see, there are many options available depending on the quality you're looking for. There's low quality to the highest quality MP3, Apple lossless, which means that it is at the highest quality without any compression. And there's also the options for uncompressed AIFF and uncompressed WAV formats, which are generally suited to be integrated into professional audio packages. So you can choose any one of those audio options. When I edit my recordings, I usually use Apple Lossless or Uncompressed AIFF or WAV, and they're generally the most compatible in my video and audio editing software titles. So once you've selected your audio format, tap on Share, and then you can choose any of the Share options available, including the ability to share it to another device using AirDrop, send it via a message, or even WhatsApp and Messenger. You can email it, send it to SoundCloud, Pinterest, Dropbox, or any sharing application that you have on your mobile phone. So that's how you use GarageBand to record a voiceover and master your audio. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. As always, if you have any questions about what you've seen here today, feel free to put them in the comments box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.